What is going on, everybody? We're about to reach the midway point of the 2023 MLB season, which seems like the perfect time to evaluate some of the signings that were made in the offseason. Today, we're going to be going over some of the worst ones. Make sure to comment down below what you think was the worst signing this offseason. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Getting it started with the Angels, they decided to bring Tyler Anderson back on a three-year, $39 million deal after he spent a season away on the Dodgers and put up a respectable 2.57 ERA in 178 innings. But unfortunately, that success is not carrying over to this season. He has a god-awful 5.64 ERA in 68.2 innings, and his walks per nine has ballooned from 1.71 last season to 4.06 walks per nine this year. I think it's safe to say the Angels are disappointed with his unheavenly performance this year, as he was supposed to solidify the back end of the rotation. Up next, we have Jose Abreu signing with the Astros. He signed a three-year, $58.5 million contract to be the World Series champion's new first baseman, but he hasn't lived up to the hype around his contract. He's putting up career lows in batting average, on base percentage, slugging, and war. It is putting up a career high in K percentage while putting up a 63 WRC+. And to add insult to injury, Yuli Gurriel, who Abreu is supposed to replace, is outperforming him in just about every category. Another AL West team with a disappointing signing is the Texas Rangers. They signed Jacob deGrom to a five-year, $185 million contract, which is good for $37 million per year. And while DeGrom has put up great numbers while he was on the field, he struggled with injuries from the jump before he eventually went down with a torn UCL, and he's going to miss the rest of this season and much of next season with Tommy John surgery. The Mets made a pair of disappointing signings in the forms of Justin Verlander and Jose Quintana. Quintana has yet to make a start for the team due to a rib injury, and Verlander has struggled to find his groove, putting up a 4.5 ERA in 53 innings and putting up the lowest K percentage since 2015, and just overall doesn't look like the player who won the Cy Young last year that the Mets thought they were getting. The St. Louis Cardinals thought they were getting their successor to Yachty in the form of Wilson Contreras when they signed him to a five-year, $87.5 million contract this offseason, but they've gotten anything but that. Contreras has put up a 207, 298, 372 slash line with an 86 WRC+, and has been so bad defensively that they were considering moving him to the outfield slash DH spot at one point. Be between Contreras and the horrendous starting pitching, this season has been rough for the Cards. Heading over to the Cardinals' rivals in Chicago with the Cubs, they signed Jameson Tyon to a four-year, $68 million contract in what, it might, in what might have been their only bad move this offseason. He was supposed to round out the back end of the rotation, but he's done anything but that, putting up an almost unbelievable 6.71 ERA in 50, 53 innings, and he hasn't been able to get batters to chase either, with only an 18.8K percentage and a 68.7K uh, chase percentage. Safe to say the Cubs fans wish the wind in the Windy City would blow Tyon back out of the city. When the Philadelphia Phillies signed Trey Turner to an 11-year, $300 million contract, the expectations were high, and it's safe to say he hasn't lived up to them at all. While he has been improved defensively, he hasn't been the hitter they were expecting to get at all. At the point of me recording this, he has a 244, 298, 375 slash line with 7 home runs and an 80 WRC+, and he's only driven in 25 runs. Hopefully he can turn it around at some point. But up to this point, he's been one of the worst signings of the offseason and is definitely not worth $27 million a year. The Blue Jays signed Chris Bassett this offseason to help try to solidify their starting rotation as one of the best in the league. But unfortunately, like their ace, Alec Manoa, Bassett has been extremely disappointing. He's giving up lots of home runs, has a 4.43 ERA, and is walking batters at one of the highest rates of his career. And his whiff percentage has dropped pretty significantly as well. Who is Another pitcher who's been an extremely disappointing signing is Carlos Rodon. The Yankees signed him to a six-year, $162 million contract, but unfortunately due to injury, he has been unable to even make a start for them yet. Hopefully he can get better soon, but for now, this contract is looking as bad as his back. Moving on to a former Yankee and Andrea Benatendi, he signed a five-year, $75 million contract with the White Sox this offseason, and so far he has not looked great. He essentially has no pop with a 366 slugging percentage and one homer, and he's been pretty awful defensively as well. He's been getting on base at a good rate, but for now, this is looking like a pretty bad signing for the White Sox. Jordan Lyle signed a two-year contract for $8.5 million per, per year, which is actually a pretty cheap contract, but he somehow made that look like an overpay, as he has an 0-15 record due to his ridiculously bad 6.72 ERA. Gene Segura signed a two-year $17 million contract with the Miami Marlins in what I thought was a steal at the time. But the only person stealing is Segura stealing money from the Marlins, with his complete inability to hit the ball this year. He has a 190 batting average, only one home run, and is, he's also taken a massive step back defensively from three outs above average to negative one. I'm hoping he can figure it out because he was one of my favorite players in the league when he was on the Phillies, but it's not looking like he's going to have much time left with how bad he's been performing. 
All right, that is going to be all for me today, guys. Make sure to comment down below and let me know what you thought, as well as any signings I might have missed. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.